In today's video, we are gonna go over how you can use find email to get more high quality leads for your cold email campaigns. Now, find email is a tool we've been using for a long time and we love here at Done For You Meetings and Grow B2B. So we're very excited to show you how we use it. Now, in terms of today's video, I'm gonna have my business partner and our COO, Felipe, take you through a tool and show you how you can go A to Z when it comes to using find email. So Felipe, I'll hand it to you. Fantastic. Thanks for the introduction, Michael. And let's get straight into this. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use find email effectively to generate lead lists for your cold email campaigns. And find email is a fantastic tool. We've been using it for a very long time. And I just want to show you what are the tips and tricks that we apply internally on in our company to get the best leads out there. Now, why do we use find email in the first place? It is because find email does real time scraping. Now, let me explain that to you if you're new to Code email lead generation. When you have uh, databases out there, and I'll, I'll name a few and I'll show you a few in this video, such as Apollo.io. These databases are collecting data either from a real time scraper, such as Find Email, either from data leaks, or they're finding in their own ways data. But the issue is they store this data, and then your problem becomes figuring out what is the recency of this, meaning how long ago has this data been refreshed. Now, when we're using tools such as find email, we don't have to worry about such things, meaning we're only going to get emails that are currently valid. Now, it does not eliminate the problem of you getting emails from people that are no longer working for a specific company, for example. That will come down to your source of companies and people. Find email is a tool that's going to find you the emails, and that is what we're going to use it for. Now, without further ado, let me give an introduction to find email, and then I'm gonna give you a few use cases from LinkedIn, from Apollo, and other data sources. Great, so we have find email open in the screen. What I wanna show you first is right here in the top left corner, we have a few functionalities that are quite useful. The one that we use the most is the email finder, and this one has four categories. Category number one allows us to ser search a singular person by their name. So for instance, if I came in here, I could put, as the example says, John Doe at website.com. So for instance, let's try my email. If I were to put in Felipe, oh, I should put my full name, Felipe Fur, and I'll put the website, which would be the find meetings, whoops, meetings.com. And I would click on find email. It would very likely find mine. In this case, it did. Please don't code email me. Uh, <laughs> or code email me if your offer is really good and I'll actually look at it. But overall, this is the first functionality. It is a very singular use type of scenario. You're going to go person by person. And it's specifically useful if you have someone in your team that will be performing lead generation for you. So what you'll be effectively doing is searching data, let's say on LinkedIn, and then searching for the first name and last name plus the website here on find email. This will be useful specifically if you are um, you, you don't have a database already, meaning you don't have a list of companies or people to go after. You're just going after one by one. Okay. Now I will put a caveat on this. If you're going after one by one, you could also be using their Chrome extension. So for instance, let's say if I came on my LinkedIn profile, okay, and I opened, and by the way, it's funny that Valentin, the founder of FindML is right here in the first suggestion, if you open my LinkedIn profile, uh, good timing. Now, if I am on LinkedIn, what I can then do is I can click here on the icon for the Chrome extension from FindML, which by the way, the way you get that is coming into Google typing in find email Chrome extension. I'm going to show you that find email Chrome extension. And then you're going to install it, right? So I've got find email right here, you add it uh, to your browser. As simple as that, you're going to log in with your information. And from there, you're able to use it on websites. So for instance, if I was on my LinkedIn and I opened find email, so the Chrome extension I have just installed, I am able to get the email, right? I click on get email and voila, we got my email from that. And so from here, I would take this data out and I'll put it in a spreadsheet where I could save for my cold email campaign. It is going to give me my name and the email, which you want to save all of those things. Actually, it also gets you the company name that oftentimes is already clean, meaning it doesn't include uh, suffixes such as LLC, CO, INC, and those suffixes that often come, come with company names that you cannot use when you're sending your emails. So therefore, you could just get the data from here and save it, okay? Now, let's get back to find email. If we are here, we have another option, which is doing this entire thing in bulk. Now, when we talk about doing this in bulk, what we're saying is we will upload a file that has the full name of the person and the domains. Where would you get such a file? That would depend. 
Perhaps you're scraping uh, data from directories. Perhaps you're scraping data from LinkedIn and you have full names plus the domain, or you just have data from somewhere else. For example, let's say you got your data out of Apollo.io, which is a database, and you want to keep the data that you have, but you do not want to keep the um, emails that they have. So you would export this list out of Apollo, right, as a CSV file, meaning, let me actually show you, if I were to select all of this data, right, and I were to export this as a CSV file, so export it, I'll export with the emails in this case, now I can import this spreadsheet into find email and I can get more data from uh, find email for the email. So if I were to come in here, click to upload, just select that. And I were to select what I just downloaded like this. I would then be able to select the first name or full name of the person, which in this case, let me see if we have a column that is called full name. We may not have that. Let's see. If you're watching this and you're seeing it and I'm not, uh, props to you. But anyways, I will go as if there was a column that said full name, which if it doesn't, all you do is you upload this list on Google Sheets, merge the names, meaning put the two columns in one, which is very simple. And then you would just bring it back here. So in this case, I'm giving it the first name and I'm giving it the website. So I'm going to look for the website link, which is going to be company URL, very likely. Let's just see if we can find that. Okay, website right here. Perfect. And then I'll just click on start task. And once I click on start task, it will start scraping for me. Um, give it a few minutes, in this case, probably a few seconds, and it will give me the final list with the data already enriched. So let me show you what that would look like. Let me open a new spreadsheet to show you. Okay, so if I were to go to file, I can import this data and I will show you how it enriched it. Give it a second once again, it's just like bringing all of the information in. And now that we have the data here, you can see we had the email from Apollo, right? Which we, in this case, didn't want to keep. And at the very end, we're going to have the email from find email, which is most likely the best data you could have, right? Since it is a real time scraper. So pretty much that is how you get your data. From here, you have all of the information that you need to launch a cold email campaign, right? Uh, check, of course, if the data is ready, if it is clean and you can upload, but overall, this is good to go. So now you just download this CSV file and upload it to your sending tool. Let's go back to find email because you can also search not book from name, but book from domain, right? And in this case, I could upload a file that includes domains in it. So let's do that. And in this case, it will allow me to select where is the domain, which in this case, it's called website as we found it before. And I can say, what are the target roles that I want to find within those companies? Now, I will be absolutely transparent. This is one of the features that we use the least because oftentimes it finds people that have those position titles, but they had it in a previous company and they no longer have these position titles. It might be something that will be fixed in the future, and I strongly believe it will. So for now, the feature works like this, but we are not using it just yet because some of the data might not be as relevant. So let me explain what we're doing here. We got a list of websites. How would you get a list of websites? Perhaps you're scraping a directory. So for instance, let's say you are scraping clutch.co, which is a directory of, uh, of agencies, right? And you're scraping companies that are mobile app developers. You could just be copying the links of the websites right here, right? Saving them into a spreadsheet. So let's say I create a new tab. I would save it right here and you save all of them, right? Once you finish saving all of those domains that you're then ready to start scraping, you would upload that as a CSV file and find email. And then you put in the position titles of the people inside those companies that you want up to three, click on start task, and then you're going to get your final result. So I'm going to start it here. It will very likely find all three of the emails that I have in there uh, for the three domains that I have, uh, sorry, for the three position titles that I have. And then I'll have the same data that I had before in this list that I showed you from Apollo, right? Because it's very likely going to find us. Um, it may find an old email of mine because I've been a founder before. And so let's check what kind of result we got from it. Again, we go to file, import in Google Sheets. We can upload this, this last file and we can just insert it as a new sheet. Okay, great. And let's see what kind of emails that we got. In this case, look at that. Because we put to find the founder, it has found only the founder, but on my name and on Ian's name, which is very interesting. So you can see now we had an issue with the data not really matching things as it should. And therefore, this is a feature we are not currently using as much. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a good feature in the future. Okay. And the last one, which we use a lot, and I mean a lot in our company, 
is a book from LinkedIn URL search. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a file, once again, that I got out of Apollo or that I got from manual scraping. So what I mean is maybe I am on LinkedIn and I am finding people, right? So I found Felipe in there. I'm saving that into a spreadsheet. And once I have a lot of links, I download that as a CSV file. And this is what I would be importing for this search, right? So it detected three LinkedIn URLs. I will then start the task. And this has been the most accurate search that we have in Find Email, the one that we use the absolute most, and the one that we are the happiest about. So I'll just show you what kind of result we're going to get out of this. Okay, there we go. It found two emails out of that. And then let me just bring it back here. Now, why did it find two emails and not more than that? This is going to be extremely interesting to analyze because before, when we ran the first search, we found three emails. And now we only found two emails. Why did that drop happen? It happened because Ian, a friend of ours, is no longer working at our company and therefore his email is no longer relevant, which this comes to show you how all of the other tools, such as Apollo, for example, had data that was inaccurate. But when searching for the LinkedIn data, it caught the fact that Ian is no longer at the company and therefore it did not find its email which is why we use this feature the absolute most. The other two emails are correct. So I hope this helped you uh, to understand how this works. I'll tell you a little bit more about Find Email. The next feature that you could use that we use often is the phone finder, if that is relevant for what you're trying to build. Um, I'm not going to go much in depth since our main topic in this channel is cold email. But if you're looking for phone numbers, you could definitely try their phone number enrichment. It often looks for mobile phones and not necessarily uh, company phones, which that is helpful information. Apart from that, you could be using their email verifier, which helps you validate if those emails actually exist. So all that you would do effectively is download the CSV file once enriched, right? Or the one that you already have downloaded, upload it and see if the emails are valid or not. So for instance, let's upload this list, the, late, uh, the last one. It detected three emails and let's just start the check. It's going to check if those emails actually exist or if they do not exist. Uh, which is helpful. So in this case, two were deliverable, one was risky. Why two deliverable, one risky? Remember, two were Michael and myself, and the other one was Ian, who no longer is at the company, and therefore it was marked as a risky email. If I were to download this list, I can download deliverable emails only, and it is a list that is ready for me to upload in my sending tool. Okay. Furthermore, you could be enriching your CRM. So you could be coming in this feature, your request access, Valentin, if it's a uh, uh, into it, he's going to like get you access to the CRM. I think it depends on the amount of data that you have for you to be able to join. We'll would have to conform with him, but overall, you could enrich the data you currently have with better emails. If you're advanced and you are uh, crazy like we are, you could also use the API tokens when you start enriching your list through the API. Now, that is a topic I would absolutely love to cover in another video if you're interested in it and show you automations that automatically enrich all of our lists. But for the sake of this video, if you just got introduced to Codemo, just got introduced to Find Email, let's keep talking about this. But pretty much it would allow you to have an API key that allows you to hit Find Email's uh, backend from anywhere else. You could be hitting it from Zapier, from Make, from Google Sheets, from anywhere you'd like. Okay. Last feature I'm going to talk to you about today is scraping Sales Navigator. So if you were to go to Sales Navigator, perform a search just like you would perform the search in Apollo, you could then click the button export to CSV as long as you have the Chrome extension installed. So in this case, for example, we have the Chrome extension installed for Apollo. It looks like this nice icon, by the way. And you just click here and it exports all of the data to a CSV file already on sales navigator, LinkedIn sales navigator. It works the exact same way. So you just click like that. You get your list downloaded as a CSV and it already contains all of the valid emails that you can use. And that is an overview of how to use Find Email. If you're interested in joining Find Email, please check the link right below. You can click that and you can subscribe, create an account. They will give you free credits to test the tool. And from there, you can buy a plan and keep on scraping. Um, I will tell you one more thing. The way that we often use Find Email in our company is by starting our searches in Apollo, which is a database, then exporting with Find Email, validating Find Email, check the data if everything is clean in terms of company names and first names, which most of the time it is and then we launch it to Codemo campaign. So I hope this have, has helped you and I'll pass the word back to Michael. Thanks so much for having me and I'll see you in the next video.
And there you have it. That's how we use Find Email. If you want to sign up, there's a link below. And if you want help with your cold email campaigns and you want to work with us, there's also a link below to do that. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.